How's everybody doing? Y'all good? Oh man, how about that worship? Wasn't that worship fire? I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that we don't just get to sing about God, but we get to sing to Him. Right. And that's a difference. It's a difference. It's one thing to sing about God. It's another thing to sing to Him and to know that He's like, oh man, just like Riley's up here and Kendall's up here and we we'll love them. Caleb's up here and I got love for each three of them, especially my daughter. But Kendall, you better believe it. We've known her before she was born. And, uh, and Caleb, and I, 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 just back there during worship, just like, God, thank you. Thank you. It's so good. And you know what? When we worship, I think God is the heavenly father who feels the same way, feels that same kind of love for you and me. So, hey, I'm, I'm Tim. I'm the get to pastor here at Momentum Church. I am not perfect, so if you're here and you're not perfect, we can be friends. <laughs> we can be friends. There's no perfect people allowed. I'm screwed up, but I am loved. I've been adopted, right, from the King of Kings. I am forgiven, and I am happy to be here today. And today is a special treat. We've been talking about prayer since January, and then we've been talking about Nehemiah. And uh, today's gonna be a special day. It's gonna be a little bit different. And uh, I've got a friend here who I want you guys to meet, but we're gonna be talking about what God is doing in our church. Just like God called Nehemiah to rise up, to rebuild the walls, God is calling us to be used by him for his kingdom to move forward. And so I love the verse in Matthew that the kingdom of heaven is advancing and violent men and women take it by force. So God's looking for some warriors and warrior princesses today. Do we have any in the house? We got some in the house, right? Let's go. So I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna just toss some softballs today, some questions to my friend Tim. And I hope you got to write some questions and put them in the box, because today we're gonna talk about um, what God is doing in our church. So I wanna introduce you to my friend. I think that's the greatest way to introduce anyone. If they're truly your friend, this is my friend, Tim Songster. Would you put your hands together? I love you, man. I'm so glad that you are here. We're so glad that you're here. Let's go, Momentum. We stand and clap, come on. Come on, let's go. If you don't know, now you know. Let's go, let's give an incredible Momentum greeting to our friend Tim, his beautiful wife, Cheryl. I saw Cheryl, Cheryl's right over here. They are in the house today, and we are so honored that you're here. So honored that you're here. Now, Tim, you're a pilot, you're a husband, you're a father, um, you're a builder, you're a business owner, God is using you, you're a soul winner, a preacher. I, I look at this guy and I'm like, I got like a gift, God, thank you. This I'm guy's- a, I'm a sinner, <laughs> right? trying to figure it out. <laughs> trying to figure it out. Yeah, right. God's hand is on you. You lead an amazing company all right, Costco and Associates. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Served in the military. Tell us a little bit about yourself, if yeah, you would. Yeah, any military in the house this morning? Thank you. Thank you for your service and for your families, for your spouses. Thank you for the sacrifices you made so that you could serve our country. That's right. So very, very thankful for that. Yeah, my background is military. For my brother Steve out there, uh, I went to United States Air Force Academy at seven... <clears throat> 7,250 feet above sea level, far, far above that at West Point or Annapolis, brother. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyway, yeah, I served in the Air Force, uh, was involved in developmental tests and evaluation, spent a lot of time in tests, uh, flying a lot of different things, and got the chance to uh, work out west in, in an area that doesn't exist, yeah. and basically test a lot of things I'd love to tell you about, but can't tell you about. Uh, doing operational tests and evaluation. You know, God had a call on my life in a ministry. I didn't really understand it at first, and I thought I was going to be a pastor, and so I started doing some preaching, but then got involved in helping churches with raising money for their building programs and estate planning issues and uh, Bible-based money management before financial peace was real popular right. and, and financing their projects. And then God put me together with a guy who founded a company uh, a long time ago in 1969, that designs and builds churches. So it's just totally a God thing. No reason a guy with an aeronautical engineering degree should be building churches, just totally God. Totally God. How many say, like, that's your story too, right? Like, he's the hero of our story. 
And so we say all the glory goes to him. Anyone here today, like everything that's happened, hey, we know where that came from. I love that. I love that, Tim. I love a lot about Tim. When we first met him, um, actually Scott, Scott's on the front row, Scott and Cindy. Um, Cindy is our campus leader here in Pensacola. And uh, right here, Cindy Warren, would you and Scott please stand? Y'all stand up. I'm gonna stand and clap too, how about that? Love these guys right here, best of the best. Y'all standing, you know how we do it. Y'all know how we do it. Honor, that's how we do it. But I'm so thankful and, and we began, some of y'all don't know this, so I'll tell this story real quick, but you know, we own property in Gulf Breeze. And before I ever moved here, I, I called one of my pastors, another one of my mentors, and I said, hey, God's called me to do this. I never wanted to be a church planner. My dad was a church planner. I saw how hard that was. I go to the conferences, walk by all the church planning stuff, and like, doo, 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 you know, like this. And, uh, and God was like, I want you to move from Tampa and move back here to start a church. And I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad he did. And um, I'm thankful. As we turned 11, we just turned 11 at Easter, um, you know, God many years ago began to tell us, hey, like, you, you, I'm, I'm going to give you property. Like, I'm going to give you a place. I'm, I'm going to lead you, but you're going to do all this debt-free. You can do it all debt-free. So before we ever moved here, we called... Um, one of my pastors, mentors, leaders, and said, where would you go? Because God didn't give me an address. God just gave me like a location. And he said, I would go to Tiger Point. And then another mentor that night that I didn't tell the story, he said, Tim, I would go to Gulf Breeze. So people are like, oh, yeah, God called you to Gulf Breeze, did he, near the beach. Oh, that sounds like, yeah, a Tim thing and not a God thing. See, in the early days, those were all the questions I kept having to field. And I was like, no, I heard the voice of God. And, um, but now we own property. We own property in Tiger Point. Amen. 20 acres of property paid for. We're not in debt because of your generosity. And so I just want to say thank you. And so anyways, we were looking at different builders and architects and some great ones out there. And Scott said, you, if we don't meet if we don't meet Tim Songster and talk to him, we're messing up. We've got to do it. And for the Egg Fest, I mean, we were talking and we were crying as we carved out a thousand jalapeno. <laughs> I mean, and uh, we're like, we got to do this. And as soon as we came to your office, Tim, it was like my spirit leaped. I, I, inside, I was like, and both of us, Scott. And so I want to say thank you publicly to Scott. I've said thank you privately, but I want to say thank you publicly, Scott. Thank you so much for having that conversation because he's the real deal and your company is really special. You, you're, you're more than just a builder, more than just a designer. Tell us just a little bit about your company. Well, first of all, I'm humbled and honored to be a part of what God's doing here. Our company is, is a company that does only churches. It's our passion, it's our business, it's our ministry. We eat, sleep, and drink churches. So we're not a company that does churches on the side. This is all we do. So we've done over a thousand churches all around the country. That's, uh, it's been a blessing. And what's really cool is we get the opportunity to rub elbows with really great ministries like yourself and, and then just watch God work. And so it's an amazing thing to be a part of, and we're so, so thankful for the opportunity. So good. Healthy churches matter. And Steph and I were just in St. Louis with two of our mentors who are multi-site like we are, but they own properties and they own church buildings and people come by the thousands and he preaches at like one of their location, then they got other campuses in Florida and, and so we were just with them and, and such a healthy church. You know a little bit about healthy churches. Talk to us, Tim, about a healthy church Yeah, healthy so churches. I appreciate the opportunity to share about that. I brought me some notes because I didn't want to mess some things up with some scriptures, but healthy churches, in the simplest of forms, they're evangelizing the lost, reaching the lost, yep. discipling the saved, yep. and then helping people move into serving in ministry. Yep. And so a church is outward focused, out in the community, making a difference in the community, noticeably different that if the church were to be removed from the community, the community would notice that the church is not there because you're making such an impact. And that's what we need. It's, a, it's about relationships. It's about connecting man to God. 
You know, worshiping God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, but also connecting man to man where we learn how to love one another and serve one another, and that happens in the small groups. It's where there's a tremendous amount of love like, like, love like you've never seen anywhere else. You know, that's our apologetic. That's what we're supposed to be. They said, God said, you'll know them by their love. We're to be different. And so it's a tremendous amount of love. And even strangers will know that we're different because of the way we love, the way we serve, the way we do. Uh, it's where the person praying up front, you know they're connected to a holy God. It's the person that's leading. It's not just a great speaker, but lives an authentic life for Christ. And you see someone like Pastor Tim and Stephanie, and you look at them and you say, I want that. I want what they got. I want that kind of marriage. I want that kind of family. I want that kind of God in my life. You know, it's where people in the church are on mission in the community to, to reach others with the gospel. It's where they have a relationship with Christ every day. They live it out. It's not just what they say. It's what they do. You see it. Ooh, I'm going to clap for that right there. That's a hot point. That's so good. It's where the members understand that God has gifted you. God has equipped you with giftings to be used for his glory, to be out there serving. Who can I serve? Who can I help? It's a place where there's something supernatural happening. You know, it's been said that there's a lot of churches that are neither super or natural. And so it's where the supernatural happens. It's not just coming in. You know, we come to a church and you can hear a great sermon. You can hear a great message. You can have some great music. But then walk away completely unchanged. It's being ushered into the presence of God. Because when you come in and you hear a message and you're ushered into the presence of God, or you hear some worship and you're ushered into the presence of God, you walk away changed forever. Yeah. I told you he could preach. <laughs> and, and he believes that. And he sees that all over the country. And, you know, that's what our world needs. That's what our world needs. I love what you said, Tim, about like Jesus said that by your love that they'll know you. Amen. And this world needs love. We got enough hate. Don't we? Y'all with me? We need love. And Jesus said, hey, by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love each other. Because the world loves each other until they don't. Mm. It's kind of like what you can do for me. It's a contract type of love, not a covenant, and God's different there. So Rick Warren talked a little bit about healthy church and seven guiding principles, Tim. And you wrote about that in your book. He's an author in a great book. I'm, I'm reading through it. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I appreciate that. So Rick Warren took what everybody else says. We just steal from the Bible because that's where truth comes from. It's in Acts chapter 2, the first church. And in that he says, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles, and all those who believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all, and that anyone who might have need. Day by day, they were continuing with one mind, breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of the heart, praising God, having favor with all people. And the Lord was adding to their number every day. And so what we see in there is we see seven principles that he, he brought of a healthy church. Number one, the church grows larger through evangelism. I would write this down. I, I would, literally, it's good to clap. Let's clap. But I would write these down. These are so good. So it's, it's reaching people for Christ. It's the gospel. Yeah. And, you know, salvation is not just getting somebody here on earth to heaven when they die. Yeah. It's about bringing the God from heaven to us here on earth yeah. where we have the Holy Spirit living yeah. within us and we can live for him. So and John 17 tells us that eternal life begins the second you accept Christ right. as Lord of your life. Eternal life is this, knowing him, the one true and living God, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's where eternal life begins. But it, secondly, it's a church grows warmer yeah. through fellowship. Right. You know, it's being able to look each other in the eyeball and do life together. Right. We're doing life together. It's having that accountability with a band of brothers. They can look at you and say, hey, how's your marriage? Are you reading your Bible? How are, you, are you spending time with your kids? What's God speaking into your life? That you can really have a conversation. Hey, I'm struggling here. 
Help me, my brother. I need help in this area of my life. We all need people like that. Yeah. It's, it's a third thing is that churches grow deeper yeah. through discipleship. Right. You know, and that's where the small groups or the community groups, where we come in and, you know, a new person who understands the gospel and receives Jesus Christ as Lord of their life, we help teach them how to love God. We teach them how to connect with other believers, how to study God's word, how to grow in his or her understanding of who God is and how to live for him in their life. And so the small groups are so, so important, teaching us how to, how to serve God with the gifting he's given us. And then fourthly, we, we, the church grows stronger through worship. You know, we come here, we worship, we praise him, we're worshiping him in praise, we worship him by giving, it's an act of worship. We worship him, but Romans 12, 1 and 2 is one of the best, I think, on that. He said, God said, there, therefore, this is Paul speaking, I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your, build, your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And don't be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, perfect, and acceptable. And here's the thing, for a believer in Jesus Christ, the only acceptable worship is that when we offer ourselves completely to the Lord, every bit of who I am. That's how we worship God. And then a church also grows broader through ministry. And that's what we were talking about. You know, the best definition I heard of love is love is meeting needs. And so we want to love on the community. We've got to meet the needs of our community. We've got to take the gifting God has given us and go love on them and meet their needs. And then uh, fifthly, or sixthly, in the sixth one, is God grows closer through prayer. We, the church grows closer through prayer. So good. Spending time with God personally, corporately praying. You know, if you spend as much time with someone you have a relationship in your life, whether it be your spouse or your kids, as you spend in prayer, how would that relationship be? Right? right? It probably wouldn't be real good. Right. We need to spend time in relationship to be good. We have to spend time. It's time with God, talking to Him, hearing from Him. And then the seventh thing is churches grow healthier by staying outward focused. Sometimes we become so inward focused that it's all about us. It's this Country club mentality, entitlement mentality is, what have you done for me lately? No, it's a biblical church membership. Lord, what can I do to serve? What can I do to give? How can I love? Where can I, where can I work for you? So good. I told y'all. I told y'all. That's... That is so good. So many churches, you know, mission drifts, right? You, you know this. You're business people. You, you, you're an owner, a business owner. You're CEO. You're CFO. Um, you're a teacher. You're, you're a parent. And, and we all know that mission drifts and vision leaks. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. Mission drifts. Vision just leaks. It just drains out. And so God said, hey, church, I want you to go and tell, and sometimes it's just easy to be like, well, people just need to come and see. Oh, I know I'm preaching better than that now. Come on. Y'all with me? And so what happens is, what happens is God says, hey, remember what it's about. Hmm. Now let's, let's just, uh, Starbucks. How many had Starbucks in the last month? Raise your hand. Put it down. Awesome. Good. Last, uh, last week. How many had some this morning? Let's go. Let's go. All right. Right there, their owner wrote a letter to the CEO several years ago and said, we are drifting as an organization. We got to get back in line. And sometimes churches do that. They make it all about themselves, like you were saying, Tim. And God's like, no, man, your purpose, your purpose is to reach people, right? And so right. here, our mission is what, church? What's our mission? Yeah, that, that's, what it's, that's what it's about. We, ha we have a mission, and our mission is to lead people to passionately follow Jesus. But if they don't know Jesus, they can't follow Jesus. And some people think they don't want to follow Jesus, but it's really not Jesus' fault. It's other people's fault that have misrepped 
misrepresented. Are you with me? Or sometimes it's not even that people are gospel um, hardened. Some people are. But sometimes it's, it's not even that people are gospel hardened. It's that they're just gospel ignorant. They don't know. Hmm. And, and, and the truth is, like, religion will always let somebody down. And, and Christianity is not about your religion. It's not about what you can do to get right with God. You couldn't do enough. I couldn't do enough. So God actually, instead of me trying to figure it out, God actually said, hey, let me just show you the way. And he put Jesus on a cross, and he stays on that cross for you and me, right? And uh, not the nails, but his love for us. And so as a church, y'all know this because you live it. It's about leading people to passionately follow him. And so it's just about building a bridge from my heart to your heart and letting Jesus come across. And Jesus changes everything. And Jesus doesn't tell people, oh, you're too dirty. Oh, you came to me. Oh, you're a sinner. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. Go get cleaned up and then maybe we'll talk. Mm. That's human relations. Once you ask for forgiveness, once you own what you did, then maybe God's so much higher than that. God makes the first move. So I just love that. And, and I've got to brag on the church, Tim. This is God's church. This is God's church. And um, I'm betting on the church. I'm all in on the church. My greatest investment's all in on the church. Because Jesus said even the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against the church. That's right. The economy may go down. But God's kingdom is not going down. It's come to stay. And I'm placing my, and, and these guys here, everything you talked about, discipleship, worship, evangelism, prayer, we could just spend so much time. That's who these people are. Amen. And it's an honor just to get to know them. That's the truth. Now, speaking about getting to know them, little transition. You came, you got to see our building, yeah. which is what we lease. We've been there five years now. And... Um, we had you come, you got to meet the staff, and uh, man, we came into the conference room, the war room, and uh, you got to meet our staff, and most importantly, they got to meet you, but what did you think about our staff? Because you fly to a bunch of churches, you meet a lot of, but what was your impression? I just want the people to man, hear. I, I'll tell you what, I, I could not tell you enough how much I love your staff. Yeah, I, me too. I, I, I me wish... Too. Me too. I wish every church had the staff that you have. And I just hope you don't not appreciate the staff you have. Because what I saw is I saw men and women who love God authentically, who love you authentically, who love this community, That's it. love this church, and want to do great things for God. Yeah. And it was amazing to just see the DNA of the culture of the church. Yeah. You know, normally you walk into a church and it's like, let me tell you about how great we are. Let me t no, 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 that's not what I saw. I was in the office, and matter of fact, a FedEx guy came in. I'll never forget it because it was, you were, you were standing there and, and we're talking about things. A FedEx guy comes in and pastor says, hey man, great to see you this morning. How are you doing? Are you thirsty? Can I give you something to drink? Are you hungry? Can I get you a snack? Hey man, I love you. How you, how, how you doing today? And uh, where do you go to church? And he's like, oh, I live in Dothan. He said, hey, man, that's great. We're online. You know, you, you, you want to know. No shameless plug. <laughs> you want to know about him. You want to make sure he was okay. Yeah, and you right. want to see if there was a need you could yeah, meet. That's right. And that's so unique. And I see such unity and passion among your staff. Every one of them just, it's a DNA. It's a very healthy culture. And, and I just loved it. Love it. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. It's true. It's true. Yeah, come on. I'm going to stand with you. Let's go. Yeah, yeah I'm going to cheer for our staff. We got a great staff. We do. Yeah. We really, truly do. You They're do. amazing. They're so amazing. We're thankful. And, oh, you know, when we first started the church, Tim, we went, we went nine months without taking a salary. So we were funding the church, Steph and I. Our bank account was funding the church. I sent out 250 letters to say, hey, God's called us to do this thing. Would you pray for us? Would you think about blessing us financially? Out of those 250 letters, I think like two people <laughs> pretended like they got it. <laughs> I was like, babe, did we, did we stamp those envelopes? I just want to make sure. But God began to meet our needs. And then when Frankie's sitting here on the, on the front row, 
Frankie move from Tampa with us. Frankie, stand up. You and Kristen. Kristen leads worship. I want to honor you guys. Why don't y'all stand up? Frankie left everything in Tampa, Florida. Lived with us. We had three kiddos. And we had a dog and he had a dog. And we had a Ford Expedition. And all of our trips back and forth from Tampa to Pensacola, Frankie sat in the back seat, which means he was crawling over car seats. And I mean, we pull up to Chick-fil-A, you know, and we're, <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. But he stayed the course. And in those days, we didn't have money. But it's never been about money. Never been about money. We had vision, which was from God. That's good. And so what we needed was just obedience. So this church was built on prayer and fasting. And we know that there's some things that only happen because of prayer and fasting. We've seen the miracles. We know the proof. And I say this just because we had people move from L.A. We had people move from Houston. We had people move from Atlanta. We had people move from Tampa after we got here. And I was like, man, I've got no money to pay y'all. Y'all going to have to get a job. And on Monday nights, we'd stay up till 2, 3 in the morning. Am I telling the truth? And we would work hard, and we would plan. And I would sit at Starbucks, and I would bring in a water bottle that wasn't from Starbucks. <laughs> and I'd fill it up at the sink, and I'd sit there for 10, 12 hours, 14 hours, sometimes before they opened and after they closed, and just work at the church, and I went to get a job, and God's like, I didn't tell you to go get a job. I told you to focus on the church, and I'll pay the bills. Mm. That's good. So then I bought an Ethos bottle at Starbucks, and I started filling up the <laughs> Ethos bottle. I was like, yeah, boy, just right here. And, uh, but it, those days was all about lean and mean. Mm. It was all about, we had to be lean, man but not me. We had to love people, reach people where they're at. And um, I told these guys, I said, guys, I don't have any money right now to pay y'all. But one day, God's going to pay the bills through the people, his people. And that's been the story of this church. So I just, um, I want to talk about giving because the, the truth is, just like you know this, we, we bought a house, we built a house, and um, working on it the last two and a half years. And, you know, you get a house or you buy a house or you move here from another state. And it's like, well, you know, we got to do this different stuff to the house. In other words, what I'm saying is it cost. Can I get an amen? Amen. Let me hear it louder if you know it. <laughs> louder for people in the back. Amen. amen. It cost. You buy a boat and it costs. Because then you're like, oh, well, I need this, and we need that, and that would be cool. And you buy a fishing boat, and it's like, oh, well, we need this. And you, you, you do anything fun, and it costs. You go on vacation, and it costs, right? It costs. And, and everything in life worth anything costs. We have freedoms today, and it costs. So may we never forget what it costs. So we always appreciate for us to move forward. Impact happens when God's people sacrifice and when God's people put God's purpose and God's plan and God's will first and foremost. Would you talk to us about that, Tim? About the power of when God's people say, you know what? Hey, we're so serious about this. We're going to put our money where our mouth is. That's right. So I'm going to blow out that clock here because this is important. Go for it. All right. Look, it's biblical. That's why we give. God blesses us yeah. beyond measure. And here's what you got to understand. Yeah. God knew we were going to struggle with it. Yeah, that's right. And God knew it was important that we understand stewardship. 16 of 38 parables that Jesus taught were about possessions and stewardship. He knew we were going to struggle with it. And so when we talk about stewardship, it's amazing what God can do in it. Uh, I think of the Macedonian church yeah. in, in Corinthians. Yeah. It said, in their deep poverty and in great affliction, you know, things weren't good in Macedonia at the time when they were giving to support ministry. It was very difficult. It says, according to their ability and beyond their ability, in begging us to be able to give with urgency, they gave to support ministry. And so they first gave of themselves. That's the key. They first gave of themselves. And they understood that it's all God's anyway. I'm simply a steward of what he's entrusted me with. And you know what? All this giving towards a building and raising money for a building 
Yeah. It's biblical. You look in Scripture, and what I'm praying for is like what happened in Exodus. Yeah. In Exodus chapter 36, go study this for yourself, yeah. when they were raising money for the tabernacle, and the people came and they were giving willingly, and they were giving every morning, and Moses had to stop the people from giving because he said, stop, we have more than enough. I'm praying to for that too, this. brother. I just want right? you to know. <laughs> yes, Lord. Make it rain. <laughs> that's, that's what happens. That's what happens when we become a generous, Amen. giving yeah. church. Yeah. And then you see also, it's biblical, you see in um, 2 Chronicles 29, yeah. in building of the temple, yeah. Solomon, one of the wisest, richest men of all, was raising money for the temple that they were building. And listen to what he said. He said, the work is great. The temple is not for man, right. but for the Lord God. That's right. Now, with all my ability, this is Solomon, with all my ability, I provided for the house of my God. I give to the house of my God over and above all that I've already provided. Yeah. That's sacrifice. That's real giving. And David tells us later, as he prays about it, he says, both riches and honor come from you, God, and you rule well over all. In your hand is the power and the might, and it lies in your hand to make great and to strengthen everyone. Therefore, we thank you, God, whom I and all my people are able to give as generously as we do, for all things come from you. And from your hand we give back to you. And, and here's what happens. It's faith in finances. Faith, exercising faith in finances, just like faith in anything else. Faith yeah. is really believing God's word. Do you believe God's word? Okay, believing God's word and acting upon it regardless of how I feel and expecting a great result. And so what happens is our thinking goes from this secular thinking to spiritual maturity. And it's the renewing of our mind. The secular thinking is a generous person where, hey, I have all the stuff I own and I'm going to give it. And that's awesome that we're giving things that we have and things that we own. But then it moves into stewardship where now I'm managing something that is somebody else's. I don't own it. I'm a manager of what God has given me. And then it moves into sacrifice. Yeah, that's right. Sacrifice yeah. always requires giving up something that's important to you. That's right. yeah. And so what I'm, what I'm thinking this church, what most churches should do when they go into a building program is enter into what I call a financial fast. We all know about spiritual fasting where we're fasting from food, we're fasting from something, praying to God. A financial fast is where I give up something that's important in my life. It may be that Starbucks coffee yeah, yeah. for a season in my life. It may be I'm not going to get that new car for a season. I'm going to drive the same car, but I'm going to give this to God because I'm going to give up something that's important to me to give to something that is more important to me, and that's God. And that's where we move from this secular thinking to the spiritual maturity where we're sacrificially giving above and beyond so that we can, we can give to what God is doing and you can't outgive God. Amen. He'll bless that. Amen. He'll bless that in a way that'll blow your socks off. It's the only thing in Scripture where God says, test me in this. Yeah. In Malachi, he's the only thing he says, you can test me in this and see if I don't pour out a blessing that you can't even handle, that I'll rebuke the devourer, that 90% will go more than that 10% will go. Given above and beyond, my wife and I, we live this out. We give, and I'm not bragging on it. I'm just saying, you cannot give God. We have never had a need that God hasn't met since we've understood God's word and started just living and giving for him. And it's been unbelievable to see what God has done. We live such a blessed life because of it. It's true. When we started the church, I said, God, you know, at that time, I think we were like tithing 15%, 12, 15% at our last church. And I said, God, we need you to do something so big, only you can get the credit, only you can get the glory. And I knew as a leader, you gotta go first. That's right. So I said, God, I'm gonna, we're gonna give 20%. Now we were on one income. Frankie at that point was working for the church, which wasn't paying. You with me? I was working for the church, which wasn't paying. Stephanie was doing massage. And uh, she's a massage therapist. And so she's working like part-time and... I said from the beginning, we are going to give 20%. And when other people said, hey, we want to bless the church, we would do this, we tithe on that. Yeah. Out to the community, outward focused. A couple years ago, we said, you know what, we're going to bump up to 25%. This isn't about tithing, this is about God's blessing. This is about God's blessing. 
And that, it was a sacrifice for us. And now it wasn't just like I was just going to tithe on what I made. Of course, we tithe on what we made together. But it was 25% on what we both made. And sometimes people think, I will give more when I get more. But that's not how God operates. Because God's a God of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And he, he rewards those who have faith. Because the just shall walk by faith, not by sight. And so we said 25%, and it was a crazy sacrifice. And would you know the day we did that, someone said, we're sending y'all to Israel. We didn't tell them. I didn't get on Facebook. I just want everyone to know I love Jesus, and I'm tithing 25%. But that blessing immediately came through. Like God said, I saw what you did, and I'm sending you both to Israel for the first time with Louis Giglio, with Passion City, with 500 people that paid big bucks to go, but you didn't pay big bucks. I funded you. So God's in that. I just want people to know that because you know what? We've never been more blessed. Mm. And the more blessed you are, the more you can bless others. Like, why would you want to be poor? You can't help people if you're poor. Oh, there's some tension. Mm. I just feel God called me to be poor. Let me tell you something. God wants to bless you. I know something about this church. I know there's a prosperity. You know, let me tell you something. God does want to prosper you. Amen. You think the world wants to be poor and broke and miserable and hangry? No, they're looking for something. And as Jesus followers, when we're like, we got the hand and the power and the favor and the anointing and the blessing of God on our life, like whatever we touch, God blesses. People are like, I want that. Right. I want that. And that's what God's done for us. And ever since we made that move, God has blessed us more, more and more. And you know what? That allows us to be more generous to people. Yeah. Allow us to bless more people, help more people. Um, giving is one of the things the church doesn't do. I'm not talking about our church. I'm talking about God's church. 85% of God's people don't give. I just want you to hear that. They come to church. They would never do it at a restaurant. They would never go to a restaurant and go to Iron, McGuire's, say, man, this was amazing, and then just leave a little tip, what they thought they should leave. We don't do that. But the common denominator in churches all across America today, and I would say more in America than overseas, is we go like this because we think it's ours. And how can God pour in to fists that are closed? That's right. How can God multiply? Well, Pastor Tim, I just don't have it. Well, you don't have it because you're not giving it. But God said if you would give it, you would have it. God said he would make you the head, not the tail. God said you would be the lender and not the borrower. That's God's economy. That's God's prosperity. That's God's blessing. That's God wants to bless you. Well, I'm already a millionaire. Okay, well, God, God's not impressed with that. God can make you a billionaire. You could get the gospel out all over this world. Like God can bless you and he wants to prosper you. He wants to give you the future and the dreams and the hopes that he already placed in your heart. But I'm telling you, if you live like this, God can't bless you like God wants to bless you. Maybe just a little bit, but not a lot. And God wants to do that. If in America, not even talk about momentum. If in America, God's people just tithe. Because the verse you quoted said, God said, hey, bring to me, bring to me the tithe and the offerings and, and, and see if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Tithe is first 10 and then an offering is above that. Obedience to the tithe opens the window. Trusting God beyond the 10 is where the blessing pours out of heaven's windows. And yet most of God's people are so in debt that they can't deploy dollars because of debt. And God wants to flip that. And if this is just for one per person here today, you're worth it. If you'll trust God with what God has blessed you with, God will bless you with so much more. Um, we're going to rise up and build. We've been talking about that, Tim. Like for such a time as this, last week we talked about Nehemiah, and we talked about, you know, Nehemiah said, hey, let us rise up and build. And what had not happened in a hundred years, 90 something years, what had not happened actually gets accomplished in 52 days. Right. And if God's people just tithe, then you know what? The church wouldn't have to have building campaigns and 
all this kind of stuff because we would have the money. And by the way, let me tell you something. God, God put on my heart from the beginning, don't go into debt. Don't borrow. Trust me. Now look here. Don't look down. Don't look around. Look right here. We've done that from the beginning. You know what that's allowed us to do? It's allowed us to deploy dollars for ministry, which is people, instead of towards a massive note that we owe. So now, as a pastor, I can sit up here and talk about, hey, we're going to raise money, but we're going to raise money not to pay off $12 million. And I need, your, I need all of our money so we can pay off the church debt. Who wants to give to that? You with me? Now we can say, hey, this money is for us to move forward because we are not in debt. And that allows us to do Love Week. It allows us to feed football teams. It allows us to support all over. And so I just want you to know that. I want to say thank you to the faithful ones that are here that you get that. You get that. Um, let me ask you this, Tim. At this time in our church's history, we just turned 11. We're, this is so important, it's crucial. Would you talk to us just about that for a minute? Like how crucial this is. We, we've got property. God's calling us to go forward. God's calling us to rise up and build. Everywhere I go, people are asking me, Pastor Tim, when are you gonna, what are you gonna build? When's it start? When's it start? And I say, as soon as God provides the money because we're not gonna go into debt because it's about people, not debt. Would you just talk to us real quick about this? Yeah, it's so important. And you know what? The enemy doesn't like what's happening here yeah. because you're a threat to the enemy. Yeah. But greater is he who's in us than he who's in this world. Yeah. And you've got amazing things happening in this ministry. And as you look, at, I, I just want to share with you, I feel led to share with you what Nehemiah said to God's people. As they were standing before, they, you, you have a lot of critics that come up against the church when you go to do something great for God. Yeah. You know, there are people in the community saying, who is this momentum? They think they're going to build debt-free. They think they're going to go over and take this land and build those great things and do all this wonderful change in our community. Well, that's right, we are, because we serve a big God. Let's go. Yes, we are. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. And yes, we are. So good. Amen to that. This is what, this is what Nehemiah said to God's people. And let me say this to you. He said, when I saw their fear, I rose up and spoke to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people. I said, don't be afraid. Remember our Lord who is great and awesome. And fight. Fight for your brothers. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your houses. It's time for us to stand up. We need real warriors for Christ to stand up for his church. Let's go. Amen. Look, we need... We need you men to stand up and be real men, to show this world what a real man of God means. Amen. We need you women to be women of faith Amen. and to show other ladies what it means to be a woman of God. Right. We need, this world needs you, this, your family needs you. Right. We need you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling. Yes. Uh, I was thinking of Ezra. You know, in Ezra, I love Ezra and Nehemiah just because it's all about building, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the difference maker. We need to walk with God's favor. Right. And how do you have God's favor in your life? It's real simple. Ezra 7 tells us, Nehemiah, or Ezra had God's favor in his life because it said, the hand of God was on Ezra, for Ezra had his heart to study God's word, the law of the word, the law of the Lord, and to practice it and to teach his statutes and ordinances in Israel. It's that simple. Ezra knew God's word. He studied God's word, God's word. He obeyed God's word, and he shared God's word. And look, you, anything you love, you know everything about. Yeah. Yesterday in my church, we had, a, we had a community car show, and in that car show, I was talking to all these guys about their cars, and man, they loved their cars. They had a lot of money invested in their cars. They knew everything about that car, stuff I didn't want to know. They're telling me about their car. But you know what? If you love God authentically, you Come need to Come know him. him. Yeah. You need Come to be in his him. word. Yeah. You need to know who he is and what he expects of you and how to live for him. So it's really, really important. And you look at Joshua 1, 7 through 9. It's one of my favorite scriptures of all time. And I just want to share this with you real quick. Because it's important that we know God's word and obey. He says, only be strong and courageous. And I think if you translate that into Greek and Hebrew, yeah. it's only. only. So yeah. only be strong and courageous 
Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right or to the left. So you can have what? Success wherever you go. The book of this law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Day and night. Why? So that you can do according to all that is written in it. For then you will have success. You will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Read that, read that last one, one, phrase one says, more time. For then you will make your way prosperous, yes. and you will have great success. Anyone want to be prosperous? Anybody? I feel bad for the people not. And look. I do. I want to have good success for God's pro- glory. Prosperous is a great journey. It's having a great journey. It's being able to, to have that open hand where you can be a blessing. God can bless others through you. And so, yeah, and he says, only be strong and courageous. Don't tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And, you know, that's the result. The result when they rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem, the result when they finished the temple, it says the enemy was frustrated, and they recognized that this work was accomplished by the hand of God. And that's what's got to happen here. We'll give him the glory. When God does this amazing thing, and you build this building, you pay for it debt-free, and you go out there and you make a difference for the kingdom in Gulf Reese, in Pensacola, in Navarre, everywhere you're going, everywhere God sends you, you're going to give him the glory for what he did. And that's why God's going to bless it. Amen. Amen. It's it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We're... You mentioned this earlier, Tim, but as we enter into this, the enemy doesn't like what's happening. No, he doesn't. And so the enemy, you know, enemy always pitches a fit. The enemy always comes against you, tries to get you to quit. Mm. But our eyes aren't on the enemy. Our eyes are above, not below. Our eyes are on our creator God, maker of heaven and earth. That's right. Whose arm is not short that he cannot save, who nothing is too hard for him. Nothing is too hard for him. And we're... Where God guides, he provides. When God gives vision, he will give provision. Every time. But, but he, could, he could do it from nothing, but he'd rather do it from his people. Yeah. And that's all of us. But the enemy is going to come against us, has come against us, will always come against us. But Jesus told us ahead of time, hey, no weapon formed against you will prosper. So you know it's coming, but we also know that we can duck. We also know we got the Holy Spirit. We also know we got the armor on. We got the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, right? The shoes of the gospel of peace, right? right? The shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. And we wield these weapons at all times, in all places, in the power of Almighty God. We want to be the tip the tip of the point, like we're, we don't got armor on the backside. We're not running. That's right. We're moving forward, That's right. forward, forward. We're moving forward. We're taking ground for the kingdom. And, and so, but we also know that whenever you move forward, the enemy will never fight you when you're walking his way. It's like my favorite hymn, walk this way. Yeah. He'll, never, he'll never fight you when you're doing that. He will, that's funny. He, he will fight you. When you're walking away. So for our, for Steph and I, for our staff, for our church, for our volunteers, we need to expect a few things. Hmm. Would you talk to us real quick about that? Yeah, there's a, there's a target on your pastor. I'm just telling you. And the enemy doesn't like what's happening. So I want to ask you as a church one of the best things that you could do as a church is to be praying for your pastor and his wife, for their family, for a hedge of protection around them, over their marriage, for a hedge of protection around their finances, for a hedge of protection about everything in his life. And I just want to encourage you to stay unified. God blesses unity. The enemy wants to stir us up. And look, you hear all this stuff about giving. You hear all this stuff about what God's doing. Don't let it bother you. Look, this is a blessing. It's for you. It's not for the benefit of the church. God does all this in our life so it can be a blessing to us. I'm telling you, my wife and I have been so blessed because we surrendered everything to God. And you know what? We don't have a debt to our name. And we're able to give when God tells us to give. You walk around and God leads, you can do. And so it's, and I'm not telling you to be bragging. I'm just bragging on who God is. It's for your benefit. And it's not that we give just to get. We get to give. 
We get to be a part of what God's doing and be a part of his plan and what's going on. So I want to encourage you to be praying for your pastor. Promise me you'll be doing that. Be praying for your staff. Be praying for unity in the church. Be praying for them to be hearing from God every step of the way and that they will be in step with him in his perfect will every step. And I know your pastor. I know your pastor's wife. I know your staff enough to know that is exactly what their plan is is to follow God's lead at exactly the right time, exactly the way that he leads. And so you can be assured of that. And that's a blessing that I can't always say. Right. And, and I also know that you're building for the right reasons. This is not to build some Taj Mahal so that we can say how great we are as a church. This is to have a tool, yeah. the right tool, that you can be used by God to reach this community so that you can grow and have, have the facilities to allow you to do what you need to do. That's what it is. It's just a tool. But it's a tool that God can use. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? And I appreciate the prayer. I really appreciate that. You know, we've watched the enemy take many people out. And so it's important we keep our eyes on Jesus. It's important we put on the armor every day. By the way, it's important that you keep your eyes on Jesus. It's important that you put on the armor every day. It's important that as God's people, that we realize what this is all about. It's all about Jesus. That's number one. It's all about Jesus. And I feel so confident. We were just with like 20 pastors in St. Louis. And, you know, you talk about love earlier. We hadn't met half of them. And as soon as you meet a brother or sister in Christ, there's just like, a, you ever met someone for the first time and you walk away and you're like, dude, I swear we could be best friends. Like, I, I, we, just, we just click. That was like with 10 other pastors that we'd never met before. Because awesome. the love of Jesus the unity, all of us believing that, that, listen, before Jesus comes back, if you don't know, he's coming back. That's right. And before he comes back, I believe with all my heart that there's going to be a massive harvest. And by the way, listen, it is happening in this country. Listen, we pray for revival. We pray for a spiritual awakening. Can I tell you something? God is doing it. And the harder that Satan fights, the more God blesses. It must suck to be the devil. I mean, seriously, he thought he had him crucifixion, and then three days later, Jesus is alive. He's got to celebrate for this much. Are y'all with me? That's right. Come on, he ain't never lost a battle. That'll preach. He never lost a battle, and he never will. He never will. And so we have such peace. We've waited on God. We've waited on God. And now God's saying it's time. And by the way, guys, God called us to not just have one place. God called us to leverage technology and to meet people. The church that we were just at, in, in one place, there's there thousands of people come. And for that church in, in a big city, and by the way, this is happening all over America and has for, for a while, um, people come, and it's not about their comfort. It's about their calling. So it's not about, well, like, I don't get to see the pastor live. Thousands of people come, and you know what? Lost people honestly don't have a problem with that. Spoiled church people do. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> I dropped the mic on the rug. People that are dying and going to hell, and then they hear that Jesus loves them, and all the stain and the stench of their sin can be forgiven like that, and they're no longer going to hell. They can be forgiven. They can, they're heading to heaven, and, and it's not just about heaven one day, someday. It's about Jesus here. It's about Jesus now. It's about he not only gives me life, but he gives me life abundantly. It's like I got a comforter. I got the Spirit of God who speak to me, tell me when to duck, tell me when to swing. Are you kidding me? That's what, that's what it's about. And when those people give their life to Jesus, they want to fund it. They're excited about what God is doing because they're like, dude, I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but I've been found. And the pastor we were just with, he had these three millionaires, maybe one was a billionaire, and they would fly every Sunday in their own private jets from San Diego to West Palm Pay for the fuel to hear the pastor preach because God was pulling them in. Millionaires and a billionaire, big oil money. And they fly every Sunday and they sit on the front row. I grew up in church, you wanted the back row. 
They sat on the front row, and one day, you know what? They gave their life to Jesus, and then they're like, man, we want to fund this thing. We want, listen, if God has blessed you, he didn't just bless you to bless you. He blessed you to be a blessing so that we can do what we've been called to do. We can reach people with the gospel because there really is a heaven. There really is a hell. Heaven is sweet. Hell is hot. Time is ticking, and people are dying, and that's what this whole thing's about. That's right. That's what this whole thing's about. And so I am at such peace where I know it's, this isn't up to me. I'm just walking in obedience. God's saying now. So we got this thing on the land tonight. If you haven't registered, I would love, Stephanie and I would love for you to come. It's at 4 and 5.30. 4 and 5.30. We would love for you to come. It's a free event. It's not going to last long. But we're personally going to give you a tour of the property. And we're going to do something on that property we've never done before and you don't want to miss it. So if you're free, and by the way, we're talking about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. You can come 45 minutes. Might be some of the best time of your day. You're going to get to see what God gave us, what Target was trying to purchase, and God said, nope, it's not for you, Target. And I'm sorry for everyone that lives and was praying for a Target. We were one of them. (laughs) And then we found out that when we moved here, Target backed out, and God held this property for all those years for Momentum Church. And so 4 and 5.30, we'd love to have you. There, there's one last thing. Let's touch on this. I think the three Ps. We talked about. Yeah, I was going to ask you. What, yeah, yeah. What is the project? What are we yeah. going to do out there on this property? Absolutely. So here's what we're going to do. Real quick, I'm watching the time. Believe it or not, I, it's 11.12. I see it right in front of me. Um, here's what I want you to know. We're going to be great stewards with the money that's given your money, my money, our money, God's money. Instead of continuing to stay where we are in the next three years, lease that, we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build phase one. We're gonna build phase one, and this is gonna help us. There are three cool things about our office right now. The first thing is we got offices. The second thing is we have storage, because when you're portable and multi-site, you need storage. Good news is we're not in debt. Bad news is we got a lot of storage for campuses. Good news is God had blessed us with that. And the third thing is our students meet their high school on Wednesday. We're maxed out. We're tapped out. We're hitting 100. We have a lid. And I don't think it's because Pastor Steve has hit his lid. I think it's because we're going to reach thousands of students. We're not just impressed with 100 high schools. Oh, we arrived. We, you know, no, no, we're not doing that. No, no, God's gonna bless us, college students, like, like crazy. But we're just, we're just like this, you know? And just like when you go to a movie theater, you don't wanna be cr- crammed in there. Like preachers like crowds. Everybody else, like, I hope there's 10, 15 seats around us. We just get a little comfortable, right? But we are tapped out. So what we're gonna do, phase one, is we are gonna build on the property, phase one, and we are going to build, and we're going to save a quarter of a million dollars instead of leasing office space, a space for our students, and storage space. So we're going to be good stewards. In August, we were going to have to sign this August, because next August, 2024, would start the next three years, which would be a total of nine years in this place. We're not going to do that. So come this August, we're going to say, no, no, we're building a place. We're building a place. We won't be here the next three years. We only got one year left. We're going to pay what's left, and then we're going to go. See ya. We own the property, and we're going to build, and we're going to put a quarter of a million dollars that was going to lease, and we're going to put that into our land. So we're going to be good stewards. And here's what it's going to do. It's literally, it's literally going to allow us to have storage, Get all our vehicles there. If you've ever come to the office, we don't have many parking spaces. So we have 100 students coming in. That's not, then we got leaders coming in. We don't got place for all these parking spaces. Other people like, don't park here. We're like, we ask forgiveness, not permission in Jesus' name. (laughs) I wish I was joking. No, I'm just kidding. So here's here's the truth. We're going to have a place for our students. We're going to have office. We're going to have storage. We're going to have a parking lot. And as soon as we got a parking lot, you know what we can do? We can do all kinds of stuff. We do all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to 
We're going to have a place for you to park. And then here's the cool thing. It's going to allow us to relaunch Gulf Breeze gatherings. Because the, what we're gonna what we're gonna build we're gonna build big enough for three hundred people, three to three fifty, and that's gonna allow us to relaunch. It's gonna allow us to reach more students. It's gonna allow us to get that campus back up and going. And I told everyone we're not leaving. We bought land here. We bought land to build. We sacrificed. You sacrificed. We're staying true to our word. We're not running off, doing something else. We're doing what we said we were going to do. And so that's, that's the project. That's good. You covered the three Ps I right did. there. I know. Yeah, no, you got I it. did. You got so, it. We're going to do that. And we need your help. This has got to be like an all skate. And so I just close with this. Um, I thank you for your time today. We've gone over just a little bit. But um, what's an hour and 15 minutes? When we watch a three-hour movie. I like movies. You were talking, you were doing all this, and I was just thinking, you were reading um, what Nehemiah said, for your, for your sons and for your daughters. And I was just thinking about, my God, I need to watch Braveheart again. I love that yeah. movie. He's on the horse. He, ah! You know what I'm saying? That. Listen, this is, this is so big for our church. I'm wearing this key that came out of L.A., Jeremy Bowie, and some of y'all remember, Jeremy gave, and little did I know that Steph wore her key today. They gave her a key, and they gave me a key, and... I've worn this on special occasions, and today's a special occasion. Because we cannot spell momentum without you. You take you out of momentum, we don't have momentum. You can't spell Hmm. momentum without you. A man of God died this week, and he went to heaven, and I imagine he was met by millions of people that were in heaven because he was obedient to Jesus. His name, Dr. Charles Stanley. Preached at the same church for 51 years. He was known for a whole lot globally. But there's like one sentence he said that impacted millions. And here's what he said. Obey God and leave the consequences up to him. Obey God, leave all the consequences up to him. And he lived it. That's what we're doing, gang. We're going to obey God. and We're going to leave all the consequences. Pastor Tim, how much money do you need? I don't know. But it's going to be beautiful. And by the way, guys, we're going to buy other properties down the road. We're going to build other places. But right now, we're all focused on this. I'm not focused on six things. I'm focused on this right now. But one day, God will give us land wherever God wants us to have land believe it. I don't got to worry about it. I just got to pray about it. And I don't even got to achieve it. I just got to receive it. That's right. I just got to obey God and leave all the consequences to him. So I don't know about y'all, but this can be fun because we're going to watch trees come down. We're going to watch a building go up. We're going to watch marriages restored. We're going to watch kids baptized. We're going to watch students baptized. We're going to watch someone who is going to take their life and jump off the three-mile bridge. And they're like, but you know what? I came to, I saw these flags one day. I was driving by. I was like, oh, I've never seen that before. And I just pulled in the parking lot. And then next thing you know, I gave my life to Jesus. And now I have purpose. I'm not just successful because I'm a millionaire. I found something called significance. It's a little bit bigger than success. God's going to do amazing stuff on that property and already has. Amen. And we're going to get to be a part of it. And if you know anything about momentum, we truly believe we don't have to. We truly believe we get to, man, because this is all for God. Yeah. This is all for God. And one day we're going to be in heaven forever and ever. And it's going to be amazing. And it's not like just harps. And we're like, okay, 5,379th time where let's sing this song, we're bored and we're picking our nose and we're like, is this as good as heaven gets? Heaven is going to be the most amazing place with the most amazing people with the most amazing God and we are going to have fun forever and ever and then what we did on earth will be our memory and we'll be able to say I'm so glad we did care about the things of God instead of I wish I had. That's what it's all about. Tim, I love you. I thank God for you. Um, I really, truly do. And Tim, his company is going to build our church. And it's, they're not just builders, they're design. It's going to save us money, I believe, in that also. But these guys are great. We've met 
Wade, we met Simon. I got to go over there and meet your staff. Phenomenal. These guys know what they're doing. This is not their first rodeo. And we're going to do something you can be proud of. We're going to do something God will be proud of. And so I just invite you to begin to pray and to say, God, what would you have us do? Next week, next week, um, we're going to have an offering. We don't do a lot of offerings here. I went and heard Bishop D.D. T.D. Jakes preach in Tampa. They, they, he, was a, he was a guest speaker, and they had like four offerings. And the people were smiling, laughing, and giving. I was like, I got to figure that out. I got to figure that out. They had cash in every pocket. They're like, we're going to do our third off. They're like, oh, let's go. They were just happy to give. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. That's right. Not a stingy giver. And so we're, we, we, this is all for God. And we're going to move so that we can continue to lead people to passionately follow Jesus. But how will they follow him of whom they've never heard? Ministry cost, just like vacations, just like a mortgage, just like a new car, just like a baby. It costs. Everything in life worth anything costs. And I just want to invite you next week, we're going to have an offering. We normally don't have a bunch of offerings We're going to have an offering which is over and above your tithe. This is not your tithe. Don't say, I'm going to start sending my 10% to this. No, no, no. Your 10% is tithe. That is what funds the church to be able to do, to be able to reach, to be able to minister, to be able to give, and to be able to go. This is over and above the tithe. This is an offering. We call it a heart for the house. It's good to have hands for the house, but you serving at God's church is not tithe. He never said that. Some people say, well, I serve God. I serve at the church. You do serve God. But some people say, I tithe, and my tithe is I don't give, which means, you know, it means I'm not obeying Cain and Abel. I'm trying to do, God, I'm trying to do what God said, but I'm trying to do it my way and not his way. Yeah, y'all don't want me to preach that message. <laughs> But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just, well, I'll just do it what I think I, instead of what God, no, 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 no. AT&T won't bless your finances. Publix won't bless your finances. Walmart won't bless your finances. T-Mobile's not gonna, but if you say, God, I trust you, here's the first 10. God will say the 90's blessed. You'll have more with the 90 than you have with the 100 because your 100's not cursed. That's for someone today. That's God's economy, and it works every single time. So next week, heart for the house, and then I'm gonna ask you, I'm not twisting arms. I'm not selling timeshares. Thank God, I'm not selling timeshares. This isn't that. I'm inviting you to give to heart for the house, not just having a head for the house and hands for the house, but having a heart. Because Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Right. So we call it heart for the house. I'm gonna ask you to give sacrificially. And then for the next two years, some churches do three, some have done five. I'm like, how about two? I'm gonna ask you, and we'll talk about it. There's an envelope, we'll talk more about this, but I'm gonna ask you to weekly or monthly, yearly, however you wanna do it, to give so that we can move forward. And I am praying every day that God will multiply your finances. So that, because I really truly know that you wanna, you want to see God do what only God can do. And I just wanna say thank you ahead of time. If you're not coming to the property today, come. What I want you to know is it's going to take all of us, and we can do it, and we will do it. Because God is calling us to do it, and he would not call us to do something he didn't think we could do. Just like Riley singing at camp this summer, I said, Riley, you can do this. She was nervous. Maybe you're nervous financially. Take your eyes off the stock market. It's frustrated you enough. Put your eyes on God's kingdom and God's market. It don't dip. It just moves forward. I said, Riley, you can do this because God is calling you. God gave you the gift to do it, which means God's going to help you through it. If he, God, if he called you to it, he will help you through it. He called you to it, he'll help you through it. If he called you to it, he'll help you through it. And then today back, we're back there worshiping. She's singing. And I like, she's not only gotten better in voice, she's gotten better in confidence. Oh, that's where I want to end today. I got a word for somebody today. Philippians chapter one. I am confident of this very thing that he 
who started something is faithful to finish it. And what God has called us to start, he is faithful to get us through it. And we are going to finish what he's called us to do in Jesus' name. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Jesus, we love you. And we say thank you for who you are. God, we say thank you for forgiving us of our sins. God, thank you for calling us out of the darkness into light. God, thank you when we were lost that you saw us. That we weren't blind, looking, searching, grasping for something we couldn't find, God. Thank you that we weren't trying to figure it out. Thank you that you came to us. Thank you, Lord, that you found us. Thank you, God, that you reached for us. Thank you that you extended your love and your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness. God, help us to be willing to do the same for other people. God, take us back to when we first became a Christian. Maybe had a little bit more love. Maybe we had a little bit more passion. Maybe we had a little bit more excitement of the things of God. And sometimes how life can just suck it out of us. Take us back, God, when we were excited about you and the things of God. Help us remember, God, that it was other people that, that they had prayed and they had paid. We were reached because someone else sowed. God, I want to say thank you today that the seed that leaves our hand will never leave our life. That whatever we let go of, God, will always boomerang back with even more. Help us to have faith. God, help us to be willing to sacrifice because it's our reasonable service. You sacrificed your life so we could be saved. God, could we just be willing to sacrifice some money so other people can be rescued? Because it's all about the rescue. This building momentum is not just about a building. Carpet didn't die on the cross for us. Lights didn't die. It's you, Jesus. But God, you know it takes money to do ministry. So God, we just pray. I pray right now. I want you to stand if you're a giver right now in Jesus' name. I felt the Holy Spirit say, go here for a second. If you're a giver, I want you to stand. I'm going to pray over you right now. I'm going to pray blessing over you. I'm going to pray multiplication over you. If you're not a giver, but you'd love to be a giver, you'd say, I want God. Maybe you're not even a Christian. You're like, hey, I want God to bless my finances. You stand too. I'm going to pray for you. Jesus, I pray right now through the power of the Holy Spirit, God, that you will open doors that we never even saw possible. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, where we didn't even sow seed, that, Lord, we would reap a harvest. God, I pray right now for businessmen and businesswomen, God, that you would give them creative ideas that they've never had before. Someone here today, God, I pray that you bless them, that they step into incredible wealth, something they've been working for, something they've been sacrificing for, and all of a sudden, God, your touch, your blessing, your multiplication launches them further, faster than they could ever imagine. God, I pray people today, Lord, would, would realize that, God, if they would just, if they would believe that if God can get it through me, God can get it to me. I pray today greed the spirit of greed is broken. I pray today the spirit of unbelief is broken. I pray today people who've always struggled with believing that you love them and would take care of them and provide for them because they were a self-made man, they were a self-made woman, they had to do it all on their own, but God, you're the one giving them breath. You were funding their breath the entire time. I pray, Lord Jesus, today that we would move forward, even financially. God, I pray some people's projects that they've been working on, God, all of a sudden, Lord, they own homes and homes and they own hotels and they own boats. God, I pray, Lord, that you blow like their mind with, with how you are going to bless them financially. Because, God, the truth is, it's always been about your kingdom. And you are looking for men and women that want to see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. So bring it to the A50, King Jesus. There's other great churches here, God. We're not the only church. We're not the best church. We're not the greatest church. This was never about us. This is always about you. God, we humble ourselves. Jesus, you must increase. And we must decrease. I just want to get out of the way, Jesus. I want you to do what you want to do. 
and we'll give you all the honor and the glory and the credit forever and ever. Bless my friends standing, I pray. God bless them even this week. I pray people step into the blessing this week. God, I pray people step into a new level of anointing on their finances this week. I pray people step into multiplication this week. I pray people step into bonuses this week. I pray people step into raises this week. God, I pray that they'll be like, holy cow, Pastor Tim, you're never going to believe. I'm like, tell me, talk to me, because I think I already know what you're going to say. Mirac- miraculously, God, I pray that people would step into abundance so we can fund your kingdom, so we can see people who desperately need you found. The city needs you. Our counties need you. Our state needs you, God. Our country needs you. And it will not be by our might it will be by your spirit and your power. So if you want to if you want to agree with me, that's been my prayer this week. Would you just raise one hand and you just say I just want to agree with you Pastor Tim. I receive this. I receive this. Somebody say and we're not ending it here, but someone say amen. Cuz when you say amen, what you're saying it's now a legal contract. You're saying I agree with the terms and conditions. And then you step into the blessing. You step into the anointing. You step into the favor. God has no problem getting it to you. God just is curious if he can get it through you. I pray for this, Jesus, today. I pray you bless my friends today, God. God, I pray next week. God, I pray for miracles. God, there are people here going to write a million-dollar check. God, I pray it happens next week. God, I pray that we have the money before we even start phase one, before we even begin, God. God, I pray we got the money for phase two before we ever step into phase two. When we're in phase one, I'm like, Tim, hey, man, we got the money for phase two. Let's just keep this thing going. Because of our obedience to what you called us to do, God, we do believe that blessing follows obedience. We do believe that favor follows fasting. And today, Jesus, Lord, we set aside this time this morning because we want to be obedient. We do want your will to happen. We do want your kingdom to come. You can put your hands down. If you'd be seated real quick with heads bowed and eyes closed, we never, ever want to have a gathering where we don't tell you how to get to heaven. Our gatherings are normally an hour, hour and 10, no more than an hour and 15 minutes. Today's a little extra. And I say thank you. If you need to leave, you got to work. I understand. No worries. But this is just this important today. I don't want to be in a hurry and someone never hear the gospel. They came to church, but they didn't hear about Jesus and how to make Jesus their Savior. I'm going to take just a few minutes real quick. If you're here today and you're, you're like, you know you're missing something. You don't have peace with God because you don't have the peace of God. You're scared to die. You're very fearful. You're afraid that what might happen. You, you, you don't know if you died, if you go to heaven or not. I just want you to know today, you can know for sure. You can know for sure. Jesus loves you so much. Jesus did the only thing possible so you and I could be forgiven, pressure washed, brand new. And he did it for me and he did it for you. Jesus paid it all. He paid the entire price of our sin debt, our sin mortgage. He paid it off. He paid it once. He paid it for all. He paid it in full. No wonder we call him the Savior. On the cross, Jesus took my place and your place. And Jesus was perfect. He never sinned. He became a sinner. So you and I could become forgiven. So you and I could become not guilty. The word there is redeemed, restored, renewed, and he did it for you. He shed his blood because all through scripture, from Genesis, we read about it in chapter chapter 2, chapter 3, 
where there was sin, blood had to be shed of a precious, spotless lamb. And all through the Old Testament, they would take an innocent lamb and they would spill its blood saying that one day they believed that the Lamb of God would come and he would be spotless, he would be sinless, and his blood would be shed. And that is what would forgive sins. That is what would make them right with God. The Jews celebrate Passover, and if you track it back and understand through the book of Exodus what the Passover was, blood had to be shed and blood had to be put on the doorpost. But now, blood was shed not on a doorpost, but on a cross, once and for all. And scripture says, if you will put your faith and trust in Christ alone, it is not in your religion, it is not in your denomination, it is not like I'm trying to be a good person, it's not like, well, I have 17 Bibles, it's not like, well, I've, I've prayed a few times before, it's, it's not that I've been baptized, it's not I was a member of a church, or I was born into this, no, it's none of that. That's religion. It's Receiving the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ. And realizing there's nothing you could do to deserve him or earn him. It's just you believe, so you receive. Today, I believe with all my heart that today some people are going to cross that line of faith. You've been searching. You've been seeking. Today's the day. Your day, sir. Your day, sir. Today's your day, ma'am. Young person, it's your day. The day of salvation. Scripture says that if we would confess that Jesus is Lord and if we would believe that he rose again, we would be saved. It's simple, but it's not easy because of our pride. It's simple, but it's not easy because of what we've been told. It's simple, but it's not easy because we've got to do something. And Jesus says, you can't do anything. I've already done it, but you can receive it. So today, someone needs to receive the gift of God. I believe it. Will you receive it? If that's you, then would you just pray with me? You're not praying to me. I'm nothing special. Like, no, no, this is God did this. I just got the mic. We're going to pray out loud. So nobody prays alone. We don't want you to be embarrassed. We just want you to have Jesus. Would you pray with me? Would you say, Jesus? That's right, pray out loud. Jesus, I'm a sinner. Now tell them what kind of sinner you are. You a liar? You a cheater? You an adulterer? You a thief? You a gossiper? You a hater? You got hate in your heart? Tell me what kind of sinner you are. Or I don't know, Pastor, just guess. You'd probably be close. Just, just, just tell him, God, I've been, I've been this. This is the sin that's dominated my life all through it. I've been selfish. I've been hateful. Whatever. Tell me what kind of sinner you are. And now say, forgive me of all my sins. Today, Jesus, I accept your love and all that comes with it. I believe you love me. And I want to say thank you for dying for me. Bleeding for me. And I believe you rose again. And today, I transfer my trust to Christ alone. I declare Jesus is now my Lord and Savior. I give you my life. I receive your life. Now teach me how to live in Jesus' name. Would you look up here real quick? If you did that today, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to embarrass you. We got a bag. It's got like spiritual protein inside. There's a new Bible. There's some tools to help you because it's not just about this. It's, it's about discipleship. It's about learning about Jesus. This is your starting point. This isn't the finish line. This is the starting point. It's a starting point today, and we believe that. And we want you to get connected. Once you get connected, we want you to thrive spiritually. It starts right here. 
Would you hold your hand up on the count of three? And we're not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to run down and put a mic in your face. I'm not going to put you on the spot. But if you hold your hand up, we know who you are. Heaven already does. They're already celebrating. We want to know, right? And by the way, like the resources in here are going to help you go further faster. So there's a real gift coming to you on the count of three. I just want you to hold it up. We're going to clap because heaven's clapping. Heaven's celebrating. Heaven feels like better than you feel when you have a great meal and you're like, oh, that was so good. We're coming back. Heaven's like, it's even better than that. And that's how we feel on the count of three. Hold it up. We're going to clap. We're going to cheer. I'm going to walk off. We're going to close out. Pastor Steve's going to come close us out. If that's you, hold it up high. Don't be shy. You, you, you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Hold it up high, would you? Hold it up high. Hold it up high. Let me see that hand. God bless you. Hold it up.